Hello, you're listening to the Shelton Times podcast with me, your host, Madeleine Robertson. And this week, I'm joined by lecturer and teacher and artist, Maxie Bain. Is that correct? That's correct. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm okay. I'm settling back into life in Shetland yeah. after a long time away. Yeah, when did you come back to Shetland? I came back in summer of 2015. Summer t- that's a clever move to come back mm. in summer. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but so you left. So can you please give a brief introduction to yourself to mm. the listeners? Well, I, I, I'm born and brought up in Shetland yep. and went to school here, and uh, did the usual things. Left when I was eighteen and went to art college in Aberdeen. Is that Grays? In Grays, yes. Oh, nice. Uh, and uh, during these years, I became uh, very interested in portrait painting. In fact, little else, and. Um, when I left college, I went to do teacher training because um, that's what you did then. And, yeah. Um, my first job was in Nottingham, so I, was, I worked in Nottingham in two different schools for a couple of years before I came back to Aberdeen to teach in Summerhill School in Aberdeen. Was um, that actually um, a secondary school? Age said, yes, school. A secondary ah. school. Uh, a very colourful school, <laughs> um, which. I went back, I, I was there for about seven or eight years and it had a very colourful headmaster and in the end the school closed. Ooh. And I went back just to have a look at it um, a year or two ago and it was a pile of rubble. Really? The site was cl- being cleared for a supermarket. So I felt that part of my past had vanished. Oh. <laughs> It's a shame it's not another school, at least, yeah. or something for education. Oh. So, but anyway, um, I had left in the mid-70s, and, and I went to an art college in the south of England, in Salisbury, where I worked for the rest of my teaching career. And that was teaching? Teaching in you know, on a graphic design course. Oh, cool. I taught illustration and uh, packaging and promotional design. Very interesting. Lovely students. Loved it. And um, my dad, I might be incorrect in saying this, but I go to my dad for information because I think he's a font of all knowledge, Frank. <laughs> but he told me that he believed that whilst even you were studying at Grace, that you are already selling pieces of work? Yes, I suppose I was early. That's early good. Days, <laughs> <laughs> and um, I started, when I left and started working back in Aberdeen, I started getting uh, commissions, commission portraits which were very interesting and quite stressful. Yeah, would you actually have them sit in or would you take photographs? Oh no, they were all done from life, sittings. Really? Yeah. Just on average, would that be paint or pencil? No, no, paint, oil paint. And how long would that take on average? Oh, you'd have maybe six, seven sittings of anything from an hour to two hours each. That's a bit, how, um, So how did you first get... To the point where you could actually work for commissions that people were seeking you to do portraiture. Well, I was exhibiting in in the Aber- Aberdeen Art Gallery and the Aberdeen Artists it was called, and in the Edinburgh Galleries, RSA, SSA, that kind of thing, and that led to my first portraits. That's brilliant, yeah. and you've had portraits in London as well, haven't you? Yes, uh-huh. yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just carry when I when I moved south. Um, I carried on with my portrait painting for a number of years. And um, it was comparatively easy to get sitters because I would get students to sit and pay them. And um, You would so pay th- them? So yes, for sittings. <laughs> and they got a portrait made of them? Well, they got a portrait but or, or they didn't. I've got quite a few of them yeah. myself. I can't um, believe I would... I'm surprised they didn't pay to sit, or was that when you were starting portraiture? Just, yeah, just, I was just encouraged them to, because it's a bit boring sitting for two hours. Yeah. And uh, they didn't have much money, so I would help them along, and they helped me. It's probably harder than it looks as well, just sitting still yeah, in the same very, pose. Very. <laughs> Did you use self portraiture as well? Uh, well, I, I know, I, I just sold through commissions. Okay. Although, if one or two were sold, but it's. People don't tend to buy portraits unless they have a, you know, a contact a of some sort. So that's yeah. oh, that's amazing. So, yeah. did you move home after you retired? 
Yes, good number of years after that. <laughs> my wife was very keen to move back to Shetland. She's not a Shetlander, but okay. um, she came from Aberdeen. But she always loved Shetland, and um, she put a lot of pressure on me to move back. <laughs> but I've no regrets. I'm, yeah. I'm enjoying it. Yeah, so how do you find it coming home again? It's lovely. It's lovely. I mean, the, the weather is quite um, something in the winter. We got used to living in a part of England which didn't have weather in the winter. No? Was it quite inland? In, inland and gentle. and No wind. No wind. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and now you're in Sandwich, so you must no get the... We have, we have the old family house, which we've done quite a lot to over the last 10, 15 years. Because we always came up to Shetland during the summer. Our children spent all their summer holidays in Shetland. Yeah. And now they love coming up too. Because that's all they knew in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's a vast place of summer as well. Yeah. And um, am I right in saying that this exhibition that's currently on in Bonhoga right now, yeah. um, Beach Scenes and Other Obsessions, <laughs> is this your second Bonhoga exhibition since returning home? No, um, the first one since coming back. The first one since coming back? I've had, I've had three altogether. Did this you do one. one just before you came home? Like a year before? No, no, the last one I had was 2008. Oh. And, uh, well, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> I thought there was one in 2015. No, no. Okay, okay. So, 20, so this is your first one since returning home? Yes. Uh-huh. And are all these pieces of work from home or from over the years? Over the years. Okay. I've had, as I said, I've had three shows roughly ten years between. Oh, nice. So I tend to just be working, most of them working all the time. Yeah. And kind of building up work f- for an exhibition somewhere sometime. And, but I've always liked the Bon Hoga. Yeah. I like its intimacy. And uh, the, the exhibition is beautifully hung by Jane Matthews. Yeah. Was it funny coming home to work on one whilst you're living at home? Was it any different? Yes, it was a little bit different. It was a little bit different, I admit it, because when I was coming up on holiday, I was conscious of the short period of time I had, and I had to get a lot of work organised, drawings, photographs, all sorts of things, uh, reference work, so I could work on it. And uh, when you're home all the time, um, you don't have that sort of pressure <laughs> no. of time on you, <laughs> which is maybe not a good thing. No, I know, I only work under <laughs> pressure. Yeah. Right, yeah. I even find for creative skills, pressure's quite good at making forcing yes, you to be creative. that's right. You set yourself deadlines, and um, which is what I still tend to do. Um, and I usually have an idea of what I'm going to do, what c- kind of um, show it will be. Yeah. But this one um, is a little bit of a retrospective because the portrait work goes back a long, long way. Oh, nice. And... Um, I was amazed when I put it all together with the smaller watercolour work, how it, nice it seemed to go together just because of the colours. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Oh, it's like a tone throughout yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I wasn't conscious of it when I was doing it, but the same kind of colours are in the recent work that were in my old portrait work, I think. And the fact that they're in oils, the portraits, the um, colour stays vibrant and as, as fresh as the day I put it on, which in some cases is 40 years ago. Really? Mm. It's, <laughs> have you ever um, displayed work from before in Shetland that is older pieces? Or is this no, the first time you've spanned? Thing. That's why I wanted to do it, was make, make it um, is it something of a retrospective uh, and see how they, they look together, because they usually live in a shed. <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> That's really interesting. I really want to, because I haven't managed to see it yet, but I heard, again, from my dad, who I learned everything from, that he was just blown away, because I believe <laughs> he's always known you did portraiture, uh, but he said that's the first time you got to see it, yeah, yeah. actually, <laughs> in real life. I see. Um, yeah. And he just was blown away by the skill behind it. <laughs> oh, that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so, originally you painted portraiture, and then now you've m- moved on much more to a watercolour. Mm-hmm. Is there different techniques between the two? Yes. Um, in painting in oil, you, th- you work with a thicker impasto, and if you make a mistake, you can scrape it off or paint on top of it, and it's quite an easy medium, actually. Yeah. Whereas watercolour, if you make a mistake, um, 
actually you usually have to start again. That's so frustrating. Some scratch. Some scratch. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So do you um, approach it differently? Yes, completely differently, I think. Because um, when you were, when we were taught at college in oil, and we never touched anything like watercolour, it was all oil painting, and uh, little little um, sketches, first of all, and then thin thin uh, washes of oil paint, and then building it up to thick, thick paint. Whereas with what I do now, a much smaller scale, and um, a much more um, sort of precise way of working, um, I think. <laughs> Sorry. And do you still do portraiture now as well? Or? Not so much. Okay, but uh, if you uh, did portraiture now, would you still start with the pencil sketch? Yeah. So start with the very technique you learned at art yes, school? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, thin washes of, of um, the paint with, mixed with turpentine. Ah, okay. Gives you it dries quickly and gives you an underpainting to work on. And then you add the detail. And then you, and then you build on the thicker oil paint on top. And if you get the tones right, that's the main thing. That's amazing. The light and dark. Um, a question as well. Again, I'm just thinking about all the things my dad said to me. Was when he was at the College of Art in Edinburgh doing architecture, he minds a lot of the art there was encouraged to be. I don't know what the right word for it is. I want to say abstract. But it wasn't um, fine painting, if I've seen the right word here. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 um, that was not encouraged as much as more abstract was. Mm. D- how was it when you were in Aberdeen? I think Edinburgh was always a little more avant-garde okay. than we were. <laughs> we had a more academic um, art education. Okay. The emphasis was very much on drawing. So actually the real skill, the real technicalities yeah, of... Of drawing, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um... Do you think that really encouraged your painting of portraitures? I think, I think drawing is the basis. I, my own personal feeling is that drawing is the basis of everything. Yeah. In art, um, even abstract painting, I think. Personally, I feel that um, an ability to draw helps, even in abstract work. Because then you can create what you're visualising in your head. You yeah. know, you've got the yes. ability to portray yeah. it. Yes. Yeah. yeah, and then even if you're, when you're teaching design as well, was a lot of the course that you taught actually mm-hmm. as well being able to draw the product. Absolutely, drawing is very important, and uh, I was involved uh, particularly in the preliminary work, which we called visualisation, which was done with marker pens and pencils and coloured pencils and what have you, uh, before developing the final idea, and I enjoyed that because it was um, it was quite loose. Yeah. And um, the students had to go through this process before they settled on a final idea. That's it. So they had to visualise it and be able to draw it first. Yes. Uh-huh. Did you find when you were teaching you still had enough time yourself in your spare time to paint as well? Yes. Or did you ever find it hard to get balance? No, it was quite... I, I was lucky to begin with in the art college situation. I had a day off in the week. We all did. We were meant to. We were meant to be working <laughs> <laughs> on that day okay. and make up the hours we worked evenings, uh, three nights a week evenings. And that justified one day not in college. That was a full time course. And that's when you were in England teaching. Yes. Mm-hmm. So yeah. did you always just have that day for painting yourself? I tried to. Yeah. Yeah. How do you find the discipline as well of getting into the headspace of when you're going to work? Do you have like steps and measures or things you do to get yourself into a creative space? No, I, th- I think it, it's a, in a way it's a kind of a habit, just that something I've always done. And, uh, and I usually have a deadline of some sort um, or an exhibition to work towards or something that forces me to work because it's very easy to not do it as well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Would you um, as well... Did you spend a lot of time sketching and drawing before you went to university? Oh, yeah. like how did you first find your love for that? Uh, it's something I've, I've, I've always been quite good at. When I was at school, it was my strongest subject, and uh, there was never any question but that I would go to art school rather than university, because uh, art was my strongest subject. And then you could focus purely on art while you were there? Yes. Uh, 
uh, history of art and various design projects as well as painting, sculpture, all printmaking, all sorts of techniques. Did you always sketch from a young age as well? In Shetland? Yes. Uh, I always I can't remember not spending time drawing. <laughs> <laughs> it's good as well. I think it's something that fuck might take for granted, but I feel like drawing and painting is the same as an instrument. Like you need yes, to work you need like to practice regularly. Exactly, yes, exactly. Um that's a good point because um, it's something that just becomes second nature if you keep doing it I think and um, do you have plans again for future works? I have nothing specific planned but uh, I have a lot of things that I've started and I'll develop and hopefully it'll lead to something do you think it might change focus more now that you're living back in Chatham full time? it might it might change things a little bit um, because some techniques um, suit suit a person more than others do. I mean, I've been doing quite a lot of work with just drawing in this in this show, uh, whereas I used to just do watercolor, and now I've got some work that is just really pure drawing with uh, color pencil and. Pencil, no cut, no paint. And this is a lot of beach scenes, isn't it? Yes, a lot of them are. Um, I like, I like organising complicated things. <laughs> <laughs> well, with different textures. And yes, and uh, um, just making something out of what looks like chaos, and you can, you can sort of bring some sort of order to chaos, and. Uh, I mentioned beach scenes in my title, but I do, I've done an awful lot of work on meadows and wildflowers and the colourful side of Shetland. Yeah. And do you think that's things as well? I suppose if you're living in land in England, now mm. being in Sandwich, you'll be right mm. beside the sea again. Yeah. So, I mean, I found the, the, the landscape in England terrific. Yeah. And the river valleys and things like that were were superb to work from and some of these are in my exhibition as well work that I did um, in Salisbury and round about That's nice I really am looking forward to seeing the exhibition um, I would say if you've not been to it yet, like myself because I need to go, although it'll probably have been by the time this podcast is on air, it's in <laughs> Bon Hoga and it's running right up until the 24th of December right, I believe yeah, yeah. so I don't know whether it's up on the 24th or whether that's the day I take it down. Or yeah, get there clear, before yeah. Christmas Eve, just in case. <laughs> yeah. And do you have any um, advice for anyone who's starting an art, whether in school or they're picking up pencils and paints for the first time? Sorry, just using, <laughs> putting think, you back in a teacher frame of mind. Yeah, I think, I think um, if, you, if, you, if you do what you are most comfortable doing to start with, other things develop. And I think if you have a sketchbook and you draw a lot, and it can lead to all sorts. My one of my children did a foundation course, um, and then went to Edinburgh Art School without really knowing what she was going to do. But it was mainly drawing and development of ideas, and she became a jeweller. Oh, what's so, that? Sorry, a jeweller. Oh, jeweller! Yeah. Oh, amazing! Yeah. Through just through all the different mediums yeah. and trying different yeah. things. Yeah, because yeah, I remember um, one of my friends, Amy Gear, she went to Grey School of Art, and she uh -huh. told me how in the first year they get you to work with every different. Yes, that's right. And it's it's such a good idea that yeah. you might think encounter things you've never explored before or been taught mm. with before yeah. and change your direction completely. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, so you start off, you don't really know what you want to do. You know, you want to do something to do with art, but. Um, and that gives you the opportunity to just, to, as you say, explore things. And uh, yeah. my, my daughter's case, she was always a very neat draftsman. She could draw very neatly and um, small scale. Yeah. And it led into jewellery. I suppose for designing the intricate jewellery. Yes. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Huh. And I, there's one thing you said which I really liked the notion of, which is making order of the chaos yeah. so that's if you have a scene that's full of bits and parts to it mm -hmm. 
do you find the making the order of it as as you draw it bit by bit? Yes, you start off. You have to start off with something, and then you develop things around about it. And in a way, um, I, we were we were always to, told that um, a, a composition had a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. Yeah. So you you can't do it all together at the same time. So you tend to work either from the middle into the distance, or from the front into the middle, or something like that. But they, they all had to work as part of the picture, you know. That's amazing. Yeah. I've never been heard of that before, but it makes so much sense when you say it. <laughs> well, yeah. Is that for getting perspective? It's a bit, yeah, it's a bit like um, like somebody said about a a, a book literature. A book is like a fish. It's got a head, a middle part, and a tail. And um, art, I, I think, making a picture has got something of that about it. Is that, although when you work in abstract terms, it's maybe not so obvious. I never heard that before, but it, it's, it makes yeah, it makes <laughs> sense. And <laughs> um, but thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us today. And it's lovely to have you back in Shetland and to have met you. Thank you, Alice. And I Very look nice forward to you. seeing your exhibition and to see more. Thank you. I hope you enjoy it. Thank you, Maxie. Okay. And thank you for listening, listeners. <laughs> and uh, there'll be another podcast coming your way next week. Cheerio. <laughs> <laughs>